So we have a third COVID vaccine that just got an emergency use authorization. A little bit different than the others. We're gonna get started right now. So I'm Dr. Scott Bland, I'm a family physician, and we are here to give you the health information that you need to make the decisions that line up with your priorities and values. Let's get started talking about this vaccine. There's a couple things that you need to understand. First of all, the thing that everybody's asking is, does it work as well as the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines? The answer to that is a resounding question mark. The question is, what do you mean when you ask, does it work as well? The data shows that in terms of just stopping moderate to severe symptoms, it's not quite as good, right? So the Moderna and the Pfizer were both in the mid 90s in terms of their effectiveness there. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, it's produced by Janssen, so sometimes you'll see it listed as Johnson & Johnson, sometimes as Janssen. That is a one dose vaccine that is about 66 to 67% a month out after the dose. Uh, but this is a one dose, one, not two, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so, but the, the number is a little bit different there. It's a little bit lower. The issue is that number might not be the number that matters because when you look at the number of how many people died after getting the vaccine, the answer is still zero. And so having some moderate symptoms, even a couple severe symptoms, a little bit more likely than with the other vaccines don't matter as much if you still live which is a big, big part of what we're trying to do here, right? So we're trying to cut down on the number of people in the hospital, which this would do. And we're trying to cut down on the number of people who die, which this seems like it would do. So I think that that is an important caveat to give. The other thing that keeps getting mentioned when you look at the data here is that this trial is happening much later than the Moderna and the Pfizer trials. This trial specifically included people who were exposed to the South African variant, which is a different strain that wasn't around when the Moderna and Pfizer trials were going on. So you think about it, this one has was intentionally tested to try and cover those strains. They're using it in South Africa now, and it was 55% effective against that. Again, stopping people from dying, which is really the main thing that we're trying to cover here. So does it work as well as the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine? The answer is, technically no, but does it still do what we want it to? The answer is technically yes. So that's a, it's a complicated answer there, but hopefully that gives you some context. So what is different about this from the Moderna and the Pfizer besides the effectiveness rate and how that works out? The biggest one clearly as mentioned before, this is a single shot vaccine. They are working on some studies of running two shots in, in a row and seeing how that works in terms of the effectiveness. But right now, single shot, FDA emergency use authorization approved for just getting one shot. The other thing is that this does not require that super cool refrigeration that the other manufacturers are requiring. So this one can be stored in just a regular fridge. So when you're thinking about the potential of doing home visits for homebound people to vaccinate them, when you're thinking about much more rural locations where they don't have access to the type of specialized facilities that have the cooling capabilities that are required for the Pfizer and the Moderna, they can all do this. So the availability to bring this out further into the community away from the, like the more specialized centers is a really important part of this vaccine, particularly when you think about locations outside of the United States where they certainly don't have the infrastructure that we do. The other thing that is different about this is the mechanism. This is not an mRNA vaccine. This vaccine uses a adenovirus that has been deactivated enough that it can't replicate. An adenovirus is another type of virus. It's essentially the common cold is an adenovirus. And it uses that, loops on a spike protein that your body recognizes as similar to the coronavirus and uses that to teach your body to fight it. So the mechanism is a little different. It's only one dose and the cooler requirements are different, which from a infrastructure health system standpoint, is very helpful. So now that we've covered why it's different and we've covered that the effectiveness is potentially a little bit different depending on how you look at it, the question then is, well, why are we using this one if it's so different and if it's potentially not as effective depending on the mechanism that you're looking at it? And there's a number of reasons for that. Number one is it's not like every American is currently looking at this and going, my choices are 
I can roll out today and get the Moderna vaccine. I can roll out today and get the Pfizer vaccine, or I can roll out and get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We have a lot of people who might benefit from getting this vaccine who are really just waiting in line. There are a lot of places where they haven't been able to get logistically the rollout working quite well yet. And there are people who have some significant risk factors who still haven't had the opportunity to get a hold of the vaccine yet. So this does give us another chance, more supply, more access to the vaccine because a number of people, if this were not approved for an emergency use authorization, are really left with the decision of, I don't get the Moderna Pfizer option because it's not available to me. Um, or I get the Johnson & Johnson. And that's the options that a lot of folks have. So this supply should allow us to roll out the vaccine to more people. My understanding is that Johnson & Johnson is talking like they already have three or four million doses already prepared, ready to roll. So this should help us distribute this vaccine to more people. Again, I've mentioned before that the cooling capabilities mean that this is an easier vaccine to distribute. You may have seen a couple of news stories about there being some waste with the Moderna and the Pfizer when a facility couldn't keep the cooling requirements that they needed to keep. And so this will reduce that because it's a much more stable vaccine in terms of handling. So the logistics are a little bit better for that. The other thing that we need to think about when you look at the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is it was specifically tested on purpose against strains that are new and are considered potentially more dangerous and are different and were not around when the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine were trialed. So this is one that is really kind of designed to face the current realities of the coronavirus. And I think that that's something that really should be considered when you look at how good this actually is. So the end game question here, which everyone is probably thinking is, which vaccine should I get? And I can't give you medical advice over the internet, but I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you what I've been telling my parents, which is the vaccine you should get is the first one that you can. Uh, I think that don't be shocked when you talk to your physician about it. If they tell you the best vaccine is the first one you can get your hands on. So please be safe out there. Please comment with questions. If you have any more follow-up ones below, like and subscribe if you'd like to get some more information as things come out or if you like these videos, be safe y'all.